What is the scariest or creepiest thing you have seen or heard? Part 7. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel Thread Tonic. Account 1. This happened to my horseback riding teacher's sister, Nancy, I think her name was, when I was like nine. It didn't freak me out so much at the time. But my mom reminded me of the story a few years ago and it's so creepy. So Nancy went to the mall one day to run an errand. When she came out, she had trouble finding her car because two trucks had parked on either side of it, obscuring the view. So she finally finds it. And a well-dressed man, wearing a long dress coat, leather gloves, and holding a briefcase, comes up to her and asks for her help. His car broke down, and he needs to get to meeting and was hoping Nancy could drop him off at the train or bus stop about a mile from the mall. Nancy says yes, and they get into her car. As soon as the doors close, she knows something is wrong. She starts sweating and internally freaking out. All she knows is that she wants him out of her car. She did some very quick thinking and asked him to help guide her hour of her parking spot. Since the trucks on either side of her made it hard to see the rest of the traffic in the parking lot, as soon as he got out, she locked the doors and sped away. Once safely on the freeway, Nancy starts to feel extremely guilty and wondering if she was just being paranoid. She looks to her passenger seat and sees the man's briefcase. Relieved that she has a way to track him down and apologize, she pulls over and opens it. The briefcase is empty except for a roll of duct tape and rope. This has kept me awake many nights over the past few years. Account 2. So I'm from small country in Central Europe. Loads of people have probably never heard of it. It combines small patch of Adriatic Sea and Alps, but landscape is mostly small green hills, each with a little church on top. Almost two-thirds of land is covered with forests, and capital is famous for its middle-age architecture. It is an adorable country in which most of the time nothing really happens. Like most of the population I live in the countryside, few hundred meters apart from closest neighbor, right next to the forest. I spend most of my childhood in that forest. I can still remember which the best trees for climbing were and where certain flowers grew. But the thing I will never forget happened in the summer of 2001. I was just around 12 back then, and I was spending my whole afternoons in the forest. Most of the times I was roaming around with my best friend. But that day, I was alone. As I said before, most of the land around here isn't flat. The hill behind our house is quite steep. Right above our house is Old Orchard my great-granddad planted, and when you come on the top of the hill, you can almost see the capital city in the distance. Then there is big forest that extends across the karst landscape practically right to the Italian border with a few smaller towns and villages in between. I never really went very far because I mostly stayed in the area my family owned, but that day I decided I want to see some more. I didn't have much with me and I didn't tell my parents I was going anywhere far. I always felt very safe in the woods, even though bears were often seen in the area. In reality, the most dangerous thing you can bump into are drunken hunters. Forest is pretty in the summer. Levis and tall trunks made me feel like I'm in a big cathedral. I started to sing a tune I have heard on the radio some time ago. At that point, I was about hour and a half walking distance away from home. I decided to stray away from the main road that leads through the forest in big curves and to take the shortcut. Sun was setting and light was making leaves glowing in sharp colors. But soon all the light disappeared and I find myself wandering in the twilight on territory unknown to me. Wind was blowing and dry branches were making weird noises. I started to feel uncomfortable. And in one sheer moment I discovered I am lost. I could feel the panic in form of adrenaline that started to flow through my veins. My instincts were screaming to run away, but I forced myself to focus and tried to get orientation. It was all pointless. I had no idea where I was. I started to walk around aimlessly, hoping to at least find the road. Suddenly, I saw a small figure standing far off in the distance. From what I saw, it could only be a small child, with a long, slender neck, scaly but smooth skin and deep red eyes. I started walking towards it. But the figure noticed me and ran away. I chased figure in forest for quite a long time. 
I never came enough close to actually distinguish any of its features, but it looked like I, small girl, no older than I was at the time. In one moment I was running, and in the next the floor under me disappeared. I felt that dreadful feeling of falling, similar to one in very bad nightmare when everything feels like slow motion, then that awful sound of body hitting the floor. A moment later also came the pain. For a moment I motionless lied on the ground. Finally I pulled myself together and opened my eyes, waiting for them to adjust the thick darkness in the cave where I landed, First everything was pitch blackness, and then I saw there was a single pair of eyes staring at me for less than a few inches in front of my face. I quickly backed away until I hit something dry and crumbly. Somewhere in the back, fires were lit. First, there was one, and then more and more, until chamber was fully lit. There were thousands and thousands of eyes watching me. Dead eyes in dry sockets, skin that was stretched over the bones, mouths hanging open like in big shock. But that was only because lips rot in the time that passed. I stared. I wasn't able to move or scream. I am not even sure I was able to breathe. I blinked, hoping for dreadful image in front of me to disappear. As I opened my eyes, all otherwise motionless corpses moved. In the matter of fact, I didn't really see them move, but when I blinked, it was like everything got one step closer. I felt cold sweat slipping down my neck, and my eyes began to water. I could help myself. I blinked again. This time, I was completely surrounded. I simply closed my eyes, wishing for all to be just a bad dream. I didn't hear a single sound. I smiled, thinking that soon I will wake up. When I opened my eyes, there was a face almost touching my face. I could clearly see dried and rotten face, eyes filled with numbness. I started to feel dizzy. I felt something like dust and bones grabbing my hair and tearing my clothes. I felt it, and I didn't feel it. Because I became so damn dizzy and sick, I tried so hard to stay conscious, to fight, but I couldn't move a single muscle, and then it was again pitch blackness all around me. I opened my eyes, trying to adjust to the lack of light. I was lying on the forest ground, not so far away from home. In that exact moment, all my body started to function normally. I ran home like a wind. I had no idea how I got there, and I just tried to forget about whole thing. But my peace didn't last very long. Next night, I dreamed about people I saw back there. I woke up to the face looking at me from the window. It was the face of a little girl. She was also dead, and her empty eyes watched me with wild anger as she was clawing the window, trying to get in. I am having the same nightmare for the past 12 years. At that time, I visited many different therapists. They say it is just stress from school and job that I should try to relax. But how can I relax? When every night as I open my eyes, a girl is one step closer to me. One night, she finally got close enough to mutter just one sentence to me. I'm a neat about tree, Fitty. It was at that moment that I realized this creepy female figure off in the distance was 500 feet tall and from the Paleolithic era, TLDR. Some scary shit happens when you witness a genocide. Account 3. In my last apartment, every morning, 3 a.m., I would hear this woman screaming, Help! In this loud, clear, blood-curdling shriek, I tried asking my landlord about it, and he got real quiet and wide-eyed and never said a damn thing about it. None of the other tenants would talk to me. Account 4. I once happened upon an accident on the highway right as the first responders were getting there. The driver hadn't been wearing a seat belt, and he went through the windshield, and there were pieces of him splattered all over the road. It's odd how it doesn't really seem like a person when you first see it. Then after a second, you realize how fucked up it is. I wasn't there when it happened, but needless to say, after that, I wear my seatbelt every time I'm in a car. Account 5. Was laying in bed with both kids, baby and preschooler. They're not 16-year-olds, lol. And my husband, it seemed like I was in a half-awake kind of state. I was cuddled with the baby. The bedroom door was wide open, with the bathroom light on for child comfort. All of a sudden, I see a very tall figure, taller than the doorframe, reaches its long arm in under the door and wraps around the inside wall. 
It was wearing red. I couldn't see its face just the right side of its body, as its head would be higher than the frame on the other side. As he slowly crept in the room, I couldn't move. I felt my heart race faster and faster. I'm trying so very hard to scream, to wake my husband. He was laying behind me. All I could do was try to scream, watching this figure come into my room. In the middle of the night, I couldn't hide my baby from it. I was losing my mind. I started to shake, trying to yell. Eventually, I woke up, screaming my husband's name and shaking around. He shot up, thinking the world must be coming to an end or something. I felt so bad for scaring the shit out of High. Eventually, after staring out of the room for a solid 20 minutes, I fell back asleep, exhausted. TLDR. I've only experienced sleep paralysis once in my life, just a couple weeks back. I've never felt such fear ever before in my life. Account 6. About three years ago, my husband worked third shift, gone at night. We just had our son a few months ago, so it was just me and the baby at night. This was fine until one night. It was 2.20 a.m. on a hot summer night. All right, technically morning. I had the bedroom window open. I had the fan on and the TV as well to fall asleep to. All of a sudden, the bedroom door is busted open. For a split second, I thought, he's home early until I heard in an unfamiliar voice, are you in here? I froze. With my back to the door, I could see the silhouette reflection of this man in the glass of the window, which I was facing. This wasn't my husband. I didn't say anything, too afraid. I just lay frozen, eyes wide, panicking. Then he shouted, fine, whatever, and slammed my door shut. I quickly, but gently not to wake the baby, covered my son up with the blanket. Instantly thinking I was about to be murdered, I didn't want him to get the baby. I frantically tried to think of where to hide my son, but I couldn't leave the bed because the floor creaked. He'd be able to hear me. I thought about the dresser drawer or the closet, but he'd hear me moving, so I just covered him. I conveniently slept with my cell phone to occasionally text my husband at night. The first person I called was my own mother. Why? I guess you instinctually go to whoever has provided you the most comfort over the years. She didn't answer. So I called my mother-in-law. She did happen to answer. I, in a terrified voice, told her what was happening. She yells at me to call the police, to which I do. I get the dispatcher. She asks the usual with me crying. Someone's in my house. Why are they in my house? The police are on the way and get there fairly soon. I hear them come in downstairs and up to my room. Nobody was in the house anymore. They asked me a few questions. I answered. Until they asked the one question that scared the ever-loving piss out of me. Who's been living in your basement? What? Account 7. When I was about 13, I was in Mission Beach in San Diego and I really wanted to buy a hat with the little money that I had. After looking at all the shops they had on the boardwalk, I couldn't find any that I really wanted, so I just forgot about it and moved on. About a half hour later, I was walking on the street with my dad, and we passed by a homeless guy who, I shit you not said, sorry you couldn't find a hat, kid. There was no way he could have known unless he was following me or was a psychic, both of which are creepy. Account 8 Three black spheres, in a triangle formation, flying by my home at night, no sound, no lights, I saw them, because I was lying on my back at the roof of my house, looking at the sky, thinking about some problem or something I had at the time, they were flying very low, and about maybe 60, 80 mph to the south. Account 9. This happened to my grandmother while she was living in northern Michigan with her sister. The husbands, i.e. my grandpa and great-uncle, were off fighting in Wa2, and their cousin, who was pregnant with her first baby, came to visit as her due date approached, because her husband was also fighting. One evening, my grandmother was laying in bed when she heard a blood-curdling scream. She and her sister rushed down the hall to see their cousin standing completely motionless. Staring into the dining room, she asked them if they saw them on the table. When my grandma looked, she didn't see a thing. The cousin told her she'd seen two coffins, one normal-sized and one the size of a baby coffin, sitting on the dining room table. Six days later, my grandma's cousin died in childbirth, as did the baby. Account 10. Driving to pick up a friend who was at this cabin party about 40 miles west of where I lived. It was close to 2 a.m. 
So I'm driving down this back road to find this random cabin somewhere, and I come across this red four-door sedan with all the doors open and four limp figures in the seats with their heads slumped over. That alone kind of freaked me the fuck out. Later on, I'm driving by again after a failed attempt at picking up my friend. Mind you, it's getting close to three in the morning, and only the front seat passenger door was open, and every person in that car was staring with a blank dead stare directly at me as I drove past at 10 miles per hour. Very creepy to me. Account 11. A few months ago, I had lung surgery. Anesthesia really fucked me up, and I would have nightmares, which made it hard to sleep, and then I would start seeing shit. One night when I couldn't sleep, I was watching TV, and I saw the most horrifyingly real wolf walk in front of my TV. It was huge, too. Size of a large bear, it looked at me and snarled. I quickly pulled the sheets over my head, then I passed out. Account 12. I was sitting in the living room reading a magazine once, with the balcony windows open to let some breeze in. All of a sudden, my glass of water on the coffee table started to slowly shake. Some magazines fell onto the floor. There was a very vibrant whoosh coming from the sky that was getting louder and louder. The whole house was shaking and car alarms was going off in the neighborhood. I was scared for my life. I ran to my bed and went under the blankets, all curled up, thinking the world is ending and the sky is falling. My cat ran up to me and hid under the bed. The whoosh came and went, really loudly, almost deafening me. After a while of silence, I stood up and went over to the balcony. Some neighbors were outside their houses, wondering what just happened. There was some broken pottery and spilled drinks, but that was all the damage. And then the house started to shake again. Curious, I decided to stay on the balcony and hold on. All of a sudden, two army jets flew past really low. Two Russian Sukhois made a low flyby and then disappeared behind the mountains. Turned out they were practicing for some parade. Account 13. The day my great-grandma died, she kept looking up in the corner and asking, Am I going home? To no one in particular. No matter how many times we answered her, she wouldn't stop asking that question. When her time finally came, she raised her fist into the air and yelled, Onward! And then fell back peacefully. That was her last word on her deathbed. Later found out that her mother, my great-great-grandma, did the exact same thing when she died, asking over and over again if she was going home. Count 14. I have a couple of random stories, but this one still creeps me out the most. When I was about 12 years old, I woke up in the middle of the night to my cat meowing at my open door. I got up and followed her into the living room. The whole time, she kept looking back at me to make sure I was following her. When we got to the living room, she jumped up on the piano, which was directly under a large picture window that looked out onto our front yard. As I looked out the window, I watched a round object, about the size of a basketball, slowly float down my driveway about four feet off the ground. It got to the end of our fence and went toward our neighbor's house. It had a couple of tiny lights on it. It was dark gray. I stood there for a minute with goosebumps on my arms, then walked back to bed. I know this was not a dream, and my 12-year-old mind definitely did not make this up. It has been burned into my mind for 18 years, and I have no idea what the hell I saw. Account 15. I used to volunteer at my church, mostly to get out of sitting through service, which was a creepy building unto itself, a hundred plus years old, lots of creaks and unidentifiable noises constantly. Anyway, I was in the house part of the church getting supplies from a closet when in walks the gardener, who always gave me the creeps as well. He just stood there by the door looking at me, then said something along the lines of, I shouldn't be creeping about by myself. I'll scare someone to death. I got out of there straight away with the excuse people were waiting for the stuff I was getting. The guy was just so weird, so unsettling. A few months after that, they found a body buried in the church grounds, had no graveyard of this girl that had gone missing and guess who the killer was. Soon after that, they linked the gardener to three other murders and suspected him of more. TLDR was alone with a serial killer.